Hello, and welcome back to Storytime with Eric Zimmer. Where we last left off in the Trumpet of the Swan, Louis the had saved a boy's life at the camp, saved him from drowning. He got a Medal of Honor from someone in Washington, D.C., and now his fame is starting to grow. This sounds like... I wonder where this is leading to. Well, we're about to find out. You ready? All right, let's begin. Chapter 13, The End of, end of Summer. A trumpet has three little valves. They are for the fingers of the player. They look like this. By pushing them down in the right order, the player can produce all the notes of the musical scale. Lewis had often examined these three little valves on his horn, but he had never been able to use them. He had three front toes on each foot, but being a water bird, he had webbed to feed. The webbing prevented him from using his three toes independently. Luckily, the valves on a trumpet are not needed for bugle calls, because bugle calls are just combinations of do, mi, and sol, and a trumpeter can play do, mi, and sol without pressing down any of the valves. If I could just work those three valves with my three toes, he said to himself, I could play all sorts of music, not just bugle calls. I could play jazz. I could play country and western. I could play rock. I could play the great music of Bach, Beethoven, Mozart, Sibelius, Gershwin, Irving Berlin, Brahms, everybody. That would really be something. I could really be a trumpet player, not just a camp bugler, I might even get a job with an orchestra. The thought filled him with ambition. Lewis loved music, and besides, he was already casting about for ways of making money after camp was over. Although he enjoyed life at Camp Kukuskus, Lewis often thought of his home on Upper Red Rock Lake in Montana. He thought about his parents, his brothers and sisters, and about Serena. He was terribly in love with Serena, and he often wondered what was happening to her. At night, he would look up at the stars and think about her. In the late evening, when the big bullfrogs were cawing across the still lake, he would think of Serena. Sometimes he felt sad, lonely, and homesick. His music, however, was a comfort to him. He loved the sound of his own trumpet. Summer passed all too quickly. On the last day of camp, Mr. Brickle called his counselors together and paid them what he owed them. Lewis received $100, the first money he had ever earned. He had no wallet and no pockets, so Mr. Brickle placed the money in a waterproof bag that had a drawing string. He hung his money bag around Lewis's neck, along with the trumpet, the slate, the chalk pencil, and the life-saving metal. Huh, that's a lot of stuff to carry. For him, at least. Lewis went to Sam Beaver's tent and found Sam packing his things. Lewis took off his slate and pencil. I need another job, he wrote. Where should I go? Sam sat down on his bed and thought for a while. And he said, go to Boston. Maybe you can get a job with the swan boat. Lewis had never been to Boston, and he had no idea what the swan boat was. But he nodded his head. Then on his slate he wrote, uh, do me a favor. Sure, said Sam. Take a razor blade and slit the web by my right foot so I can wiggle my toes. Ugh. He held out his foot. Why do you want to wriggle your toes, asked Sam. You'll say, e wrote Lewis. I need my toes in my business. Sam hesitated. Then he borrowed a razor blade from one of the older counselors. He made a long, neat cut between Lewis's inner toe and middle toe. Then he made another cut between Lewis's middle toe and outer toe. Oh, that has got to hurt. Uh, does it hurt? Lewis shook his head. He lifted his trumpet, placed his toe on, on his valves, and played... Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Go home. Sam grinned. The swan boat will hire you, all right, he said. You're a real trumpeter now, but with your web cut, swimming will be harder for you. You will have a tendency to swim in circles because your left foot will push better than your right foot. I can manage, wrote Lewis. Thanks very much for the surgery. The next day, the campers left. The canoes had been hoisted onto racks in the boathouse. The float had been hauled onto the beach. The windows of the 
lodge had been boarded up against bears and squirrels. Mattresses had been packed into zipper bags. Everything was snug and ready for the long, silent winter. Of all the campers, only Lewis stayed behind. His flight feathers were growing fast, but he still couldn't fly. He made up his mind he would remain at camp all alone until he was able to take to the air again, and then he would fly straight to Boston. The lake was lonely without the boys, but Lewis didn't mind being alone. For the next three weeks, he took life easy. He grew his flight feathers, dreamed of Serena by day and by night, and practiced his trumpet. He had listened to music all summer. Several of the boys had radios and record players, and now he practiced the songs on his trumpet. Every day he got better and better. One day he composed a love song for Serena and wrote the words and music on his slate. Oh, ever in the greening spring, by bank and b uh, retaining... For love shall I be sorrowing, and swans of my desiring. He was really thinking of Serena, but he left her name out of it and kept it personal. Probably be a good idea. <clears throat> his plumage was beautiful now, and he felt great. On the 21st of September, he tried his wings. To his great relief, they lifted him. Lewis rose into the air. The trumpet banged against the slate, the slate knocked against the money bag, the life-saving metal clinked against the chalk pencil, but Lewis was airborne again. He climbed and climbed and headed for Boston. It was wonderful to be in the sky again. Flying is a lot harder than it was before I acquired all these possessions, thought Lewis. The best way to travel, really, is to travel light. On the other hand, I have to have these things. I gotta have the trumpet if I am to win Serena for my wife. I've got to carry this money bag to hold the money to pay my father's debts. I've got to have this slate and pencil so I can communicate with people, and I ought to wear the medal because I really did save a life, and if I didn't wear it, people might think I was ungrateful. On and on he flew towards Boston, which is the capital of Massachusetts, and which is famous for its baked beans, its codfish, its tea parties, its cabots, its laos, its sultan stalls, and its swan boats. Chapter 14. Boston. Lewis liked Boston the minute he saw it from the sky. Far beneath him was a river. Near the river was a park. In the park was a lake. In the lake was an island. On the shore was a dock. Tied to the dock was a boat shaped like a swan. The place looked ideal. There was even a, fi a very fine hotel nearby. Lewis circled twice, then glided down and splashed to a, top in, to a stop in the lake. Several ducks swam up to look him over. The park was called the Public Garden. Everybody in Boston knows about it and goes there to sit on benches in the sun, to stroll about, to feed the pigeons and the squirrels, and to ride the swan boat. A ride costs 25 cents for grown-ups and 15 cents for children. After a short rest and a bite to eat, Lewis swam over to it, the dock and climbed out on the shore. The man who was taking tickets for the swan boat ride seemed surprised to see an enormous white swan wearing so many things around his neck. Hello, said the boatman. Lewis lifted his trumpet. Go ho, he replied. At the sound, every bird in the park looked up. The boatman jumped. Boston residents as far as a mile away looked up and said, What's that? Nobody in Boston had ever heard a trumpeter swan. The sound made a big impression. People eating a late breakfast in the Ritz Hotel at, on Arlington Street looked up from their food. Waiters and bellboys said, What's that? The man in charge of the swan boat was probably the most surprised man in Boston. He examined Lewis's trumpet, his money bag, his life-saving medal, his slate, and his chalk pencil. Then he asked Lewis what he wanted. Lewis wrote on his slate, Have trumpet. Need work. Okay, said the boatman. You've got yourself a job. A boat leaves here in five minutes for a trip around the lake. Your job will be to swim in front of the boat, leading the way and blowing your horn. What salary do I get? asked Lewis on his slate. We'll settle that later, when we see how you make out, said the boatman. This is just a tryout. Lewis nodded. He arranged his things neatly around his neck, entered the water quickly, took up a position a few yards in front of the boat and waited. He wondered what would make the boat go. He couldn't see any outboard motor, and there were no oars. In the forward part of the boat were benches for the passengers. In the stern was a structure that was shaped like a swan. 
It was hollow. Inside of it was a seat, like a bicycle seat. And there were two pedals inside, like the pedals of a bicycle. When the passengers were all aboard, a young man appeared. He climbed onto the stern of the boat and, and sat down on the seat inside the sw hollow oh, swan-shaped structure and began to push the pedals with his feet, as though he were riding a bike. A paddle wheel began to turn. The boatman cast it the lines off, and as the young man pedaled, the swan boat slowly moved out into the lake. Lewis led the way. Swimming with his left foot, holding his trumpet with his right foot. Go ho, said Lewis's trumpet. The wild sound rang out and clear and stirred everyone's blood. Then realizing that he should play something appropriate, Lewis played a song he had heard the boy sing at camp. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Why didn't I think of that? The swan boat passengers were beside themselves with joy and excitement. A real live swan, playing a trumpet. Life was a dream, all right. What a lark! What fun! What pleasure! This is real groovy, cried a boy in front of the seat. That bird is as good as... Louis Armstrong, the famous trumpet player. I'm going to call him Louis. When Louis heard, when Louis heard that, is he swam alongside the boat, took his chalk pencil in his mouth and wrote... That's actually my name. <coughs> hey, how about that, yelled the boy. The swan can write, too. Lewis can write. Let's give him a cheer. The passengers cheered wildly. Lewis swam ahead again, leading the way. Slowly and gracefully, the boat circled the island, while Lewis played gentle on my mind on his trumpet. It was a lovely September morning, hazy and warm. Trees were beginning to show their autumn colors. Lewis then played Old Man River. When the swan boat docked and the passengers got off, long lines of people were waiting to get aboard for the next ride. Business was booming. Another boat was being made ready to accommodate the crowds. Everyone wanted to ride the swan boats behind a real-life swan playing a trumpet. It was the biggest happening in Boston in a long time. People like strange events and queer happenings, and the swan boat, with Lewis out le front leading the way, suddenly became the most popular attraction in Boston. You're hired, said the boatman, when Lewis climbed out into the bank. With you playing